thank you, Professor Vagmari, for this uh, opportunity to share some of our ongoing research here. I also would like to take, I would like to also take the opportunity to thank uh, council members and all the fellows uh, for electing me as a fellow of the academy. Indeed, I consider this as a great academic honor uh, for our research work, uh, ongoing research work at Indian Institute of Science. So uh, in the next 15 minutes or so, it is very, very difficult task to give a very focused theme of a you know, uh, talk on a particular topic. Uh, so uh, what I have done is I have highlighted a major outcome of our research activity at Indian Institute of Science uh, uh, in the past. We have been doing this work in the past one and a half decade. So uh, under this uh, title, Coherent Processes and Other Emerging uh, Properties of Molecular Semiconductor, I will highlight three examples which essentially give a flavor of a research kind of research we are doing at IISC. So uh, this is uh, the major research goals and objectives. Uh, you see that we are a group of a synthetic chemist. Our core research area is the design and synthesis of a molecular semiconductor for a variety of range of optoelectronic uh, devices. Uh, including organic solar cells, organic light emitting diodes. Uh, recently, we also started a program on a flow battery, uh, you know, photo detectors and neuromorphic uh, computing and organic electrochemical transistors. So essentially, we take a advantage of a molecular design here and you know, generate a new class of a material to address some of the key fundamental questions uh, in these devices. And also parallelly, we put efforts to enhance the performance of these after electronic devices. For example, uh, currently we have been actively engaged working on a semi-transparent organic solar cells. It has a huge uh, potential, for example, in agrivoltaics, building integrated photovoltaics and indoor photovoltaics. So here the essentially the idea is you use the sunlight okay to convert into electricity but the outcoming light comes from this transparent solar cells can be used for you know essentially to, to grow the plants as well as you can also integrate with the building uh, for especially for a BIP materials. So we have been also actively engaged as I said before in a flow battery research for example in flow battery there are issues, for example, these catholytes and analytes are not stable. So there is a, indeed a very challenging research problem. How are we going to improve the stability of these uh, catholytes, so analytes? So, so eventually, the, 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 the long-term goal for this research is you can develop a molecular semiconductor-based technologies, and it has the, with the synergy between synthetic chemistry, uh, spectroscopy, and theoretical approaches to arrive a sort of a optimized application for specific molecular structure. So this is a sort of a long-term goal for our research program at IIC, but I will not be able to cover many things, aspects of this research. So let me just highlight a few aspects. So to first, let us try to identify the questions. Why molecular semiconductors? As you see, silicon underpins the optoelectronic devices and it's a ubiquitous in modern optoelectronic devices. Silicon has many, many advantage. It is non-toxic. It's a, a, a excellent, very stable semiconductor. And the physics of this uh, silicon is very, very well studied. But however, having said that, it has several major drawbacks. For example, it has a fixed crystal structure. It's an indirect band gap material. So it's a very lousy light harvesting material. So and it, it cannot be used for the display applications or some variety of other optoelectronic devices. You cannot tune the band gap much in silicon, so you can do a little gain in by doping a little bit, but not much. You cannot improve the tune the band gap, and all the processing happens at very high temperature. And the last bullet point I said it is sort of you know you know reached the stage that it is very very difficult to miniaturize, and especially for the integrated circuits and you know double the number of transistors. So if you compare, the molecular semiconductors are distinct class of materials. So they have, there are several advantage with the over silicon. So in, the, in case of molecular semiconductor, you see that you can engineer the functionality and you can tune the band gap. So it is very, for example, the, the chemical structures, what I've shown in here, my slide here, you can tune the band gap with from almost like a three electron volt, you can go to very, very low band gap semiconductor up below one EV. And you can also improve the solution processability. You see there's a pi conjugated backbone. You can functionalize these pi conjugated backbone with a long alkyl chain. For example, this alkyl chain, if you put it there, 
you can easily process the these semiconductor thin films in a common organic solvent so that's a major major advantage over a conventional semiconductor like a silicon where the processing has to be everything on the high temperature and these material also can be coat on a, any thin film substrate for example you can use you can print essentially on any kind of a substrate but and so these are the sort of advantage for the molecular semiconductors but so for example as i pointed out in the previous slide you can make it a semi-transparent solar cells but the one of the major drawback in these materials is a low charger charge carrier mobility these are all disorder semiconductors and we you know you see that this hampers the the sort of potential applications up in this material so let's reflect upon what limits the mobility in a conjugated polymer if you ask these questions so the conjugated polymers are here as I, as i indicated in the previous slide you can process them in common organic solvents and they have a numerous you know sort of a chain conformation so here i have shown a, a well studied polymer called polyparaphenylene vinylene you see that these are a b and c are chemically identical structures but the electronic properties of these three subunits are going to be very very different because of the chain flexibility these polymers can adopt a variety of conformation okay and that gives essentially rise to a defects and these defects are extremely difficult to identify with the you know sort of a with characterization and it's also difficult to sort of repair these defects okay when you design a material in the laboratory by chemical synthesis so these are all inherent defect so in the when the uh, a delocalization happens through this pi conjugated backbones these sort of a defects essentially limits the charge carrier mobility and that they do adopt a range of conformation for example it depends upon the nature of the backbone polymer can adopt a sort of a coil and it can also form a toroids and it can also form a bundle of you know fibers that depends upon the several thermodynamic pa parameters for example entropy and enthalpy does you know control the kind of con conformation these polymer adopt for example uh, the chain flexibility essentially you know correlates the entropy aspects and as well as the intra chain and interchain you know interactions you know which relates to the enthalpy so these are a sort of a a wonderful molecular solids and it, it you know it is again it's extremely difficult to correlate the electrical properties with the structures of these polymers so eventually so these are the it's a very complex problem to issue and identify what limits the mobility in charge you know in conjugated polymer when you cast a film then you in addition to the complexity of the conformation we do not have any control over the microstructures polymer can form if you look at here my cursor here you see that it can form a range of microstructures depends upon the kind of environment you provide kind of processing condition kind of annealing temperature you make a thin film for example a polymer like a p3ht can form a such well ordered aggregates and it has sort of mixed domains you have crystalline domains as well as amorphous domains so mixed domains is very very difficult to address the the questions in this kind of a complex system when you measure the electrical properties of a thin film of a such a conjugated polymer it is always a challenging questions to correlate the electrical properties with the structural properties as a result these materials suffer or you know with a very low charge carrier mobility when we started our research program at iisc we you know thought about this research problem in in you know and then we sort of you know designing a molecular design principles a rational molecular design principles for a to you know to develop in new materials so our approach is very simple i will explain for a, this in very, in very detail here we use a sort of a thiophene as a aromatic electron donor and diketopyrrole pyrrole as a acceptor you see that this blue part of the unit as well as the red part of unit it's the, the pi conjugated backbone he is is a similar there is no much of a difference in his structures and we introduce these alkyl change to make it the material polymeric material as soluble in common organic solvent when you compare these structures with this other the part of the you know structures chemical structures here we varied the alkyl chains by varying the alkyl chains we wanted to study what are the microstructures these you know polymers do form first the idea is very simple here you have to have a sort of a 
delocalization, a large delocalization length in the polymer. Then we, we know, sort of we improve the microstructures, improve the crystallization of polymer by introducing the different alkyl chains. So here is the, the, the polymer which has a very unique structures. The polymer has a similar backbone, but a different alkyl chain. What we did is we functionalized this nitrogen with a hydrophobic, a long alkyl chain. Whereas the other repeating unit of the polymer, we put a, a trithling glycol chain. So it's a sort of amphiphilic polymer we made in the laboratory. And we asked this question, can this polymer will be N-type? So when I say P and N-type, you know, if you see the conventional semiconductor language where the pi conjugated polymers are predominantly P-types. There are very, very few N-type polymers are reported in literature when we started this research. For example, Buckminster Fulton is a good n-type, but it has again a very low charge carrier mobility. So we sort of wanted to address this question: Can you make a pi conjugated polymer with a, a controlled, a defect-free microstructure in thin film with very high mobility? So to our surprise, when we took this polymer and casted a film, we indeed found a. This is a grazing incidence scattering measurement. You see that we found a three to four orders of a lamellar packing. So there is a very strong pi pi stacking interactions and polymer predominantly formed a John stacking, which is very, very good for the transport properties. When you cast a film and further looked at the a, a, you know, AFM image of the thin film, we see this forms a bundle of a and they, these you know, uh, substrates are not treated substrates. So it is simple casting a film on a SiO2, you see a long nanofibers of these structures. And eventually, as I said, I will not go very detailed in the interest of time. So what we are, the major outcome of this research project is we indeed found very high electron mobility in a field effect transistor geometry. The electron mobility is where one, two, three. We observed a band-like transport, which is very, very sort of a unique phenomena in a pi conjugated system, which was very rarely observed in, you know, so far in the literature. And this polymer has this polar side chains. It has a very high dielectric constant. So we could achieve a very unique class of a property in a one of the uh, in a pi conjugated polymer rationally designs our lab as i said i will quickly change the topic now i will go to this questions the other questions is you know in a in a, in the in a context of a photovoltaics can you go beyond shock liquid limit so this is the again a very challenging questions all solar cells so far made with the conventional or any kind of a class of semiconductor they suffer in major loss mechanism I mean, there is a, a serious efforts in the community. How are we going to address these uh, loss mechanisms? For example, when you shine on a silicon like a semiconductor, a uh, you know, sunlight, you have a major losses in the form of a thermalization loss. So this loss is indeed very high, 33%. You see that, you know, whatever the available energy to convert from one sun to a, you know, actual power conversion efficiency is limited to 33%. So this is a seminal paper written by Shockley Quiser uh, in a 1961, where they did the calculations and they set the limit for a various class of a semiconductor. So the question is, can you go beyond Shockley Quiser limit? Yeah, so this is the excess energy band gap you can, you know, you lose in the form of thermalization and the maximum work you can get from the Fermi levels of a semiconductor. So yes, we can one one can go beyond Shockley Causer limit, but but if you generate something called a multiple exciton generation, uh, you know multiple excitons in a organic semiconductor. So this is the sum of the preliminary results. You see that theoretical calculations in a single junction solar cells, you get a maximum efficiency up to thirty three percent, as I highlighted in the previous slide. When you use a concept like multiple exciton, then you can efficiency go out from 33% to the 42%. So what is this multiple exciton process is all about? So this is something we have been working in, a, in at IISC. This is called singlet efficient sensitized solar cells. You see that what is the singlet efficient sensitized solar cells? I will describe the device structure here. We have a conventional semiconductor material like a silicon, which will take away the photons at the low band gap energy around one EV. But if you coat a singlet, you know, fission dye on a, like the such semiconductor, you can take this high energy photon and you can reduce the losses. And these dye, essentially, where my cursor is, you know, so pointing out, has a property it can undergo a some sort of a fission. So then you can really improve the total quantum efficiency. But there are many challenges here. If this is, of course, a concept. And recently, the Mark Baldos group demonstrated it indeed works. Because there are major many challenges apart from at the interface, what determine the interface. 
okay and what are the how are we going to separate a this multiple xenon at the interface so what i have shown is that uh, there are multiple steps here Oops, okay i have only two minutes to highlight this research problem so what we do in our group so what we do in our group we design a material for a single edition. the idea here is basically what we do is the, the the this this topic is very very sort of a challenging and with the there are currently the research under progress is what are the key factors that determine seamless fission so there are many factors for example optimal electron coupling spin dephasing dynamics and triplet pair emission and there are several other parameters which essentially controls the singlet fission so when you design a dye a molecular a dye in the laboratory we have to really meet these parameters so we you know recently synthesized a pentacene based a diketopyrrole pyrrole bridged a dimer where you we put bridge as phenyl thiophene and selenophene and interestingly here we see okay we see a you know sort of a generation of a triplet in one of the chromophore we do not see such you know sort of a single fission in selenophene and thiophene so this is uh, so, you know again we need a detail a talk why do we see only in one class of a material a single fission and why can't we see in other class of a material so this part uh, we we indeed demonstrated how the spin density optimization on the pentacene ladder is important to design the chromophores for a singlet fission applications so the final last example what we in a case of organic solar cells there are again many challenging research problem one of the major research problem here is uh, what determines the efficiency whether charge transfer or energy transfer so what we do in our lab is we make very high efficiency solar cells like for example we reach efficiency up to 16 percent i ask these questions whether the energy transfer the how energy transfer is essentially controls the short circuit current so this is the basically the idea so i would like to acknowledge finally with my collaborators the majority of the uh, spectroscopy work ultra fast spectroscopy works on singlet fission so done with the professor jyotis mandas gupta in tifr and we also collaborate with professor richard friend for the same similar kind of a research problem and these are the students and postdocs have worked on these research problems so once again i thank academy and professor wagmari for giving this opportunity thank you very much thank you very much uh, professor patil for a very interesting talk and these materials seem really complex and the science of them is quite intricate i can we can see there is a question from professor baskaran yeah um, i will read it out long distance electron transfers take place in biology in dna in proteins with great ease are there lessons for the field of molecular semiconductors to take from there yes there are indeed lessons they, that's a very relevant questions but you know the order structures what we can have a, a stacking dna structures people know that what kind of stacking you have so when you make a new polymer in the laboratory you know it's very very hard to understand the microstructures so when you cast a thin film as i indicated in the first part of the talk you forms a very complex microstructures so correlating electrical properties with the microstructure is very very challenging and reproducibility is an issue in a basically you have a batch to batch variation every time you synthesize the polymer you essentially will not get similar molecular weight similar conformation so that is the reason this becomes very complex to correlate the electrical properties but there are certainly lessons to learn from those structures uh, so Satish, i see that professor radha krishnan has sent a message to you directly which Sorry. i cannot read if you can read out the question and then respond to it, it will be nice. It says there was a mention of a material with a high dielectric constant. Is there any molecular level understanding of why the specific substitutions led to this? Okay, I think the, the thank you for that's a very interesting question. So we see, we don't yet understand why high dielectric constants. One of the uh, you know, hype, you know, sort of a hypothesis we put forward is this polar side chains, trifling glycol chain introduce the polarity. But when you swipe the, uh, you know, with very, very high frequency, you know, it's not stable. So it only stabilizes in particular part of the, you know, I could not show the results, but we you know when you swipe the frequency and measure the dielectric constant of the, you know, polymer, 
it is stable in a particular window once you go to the very high frequency it is not stable so we see so at the moment what we the way we are explaining our results is this side chains has induced the polarity and the backbone has a donor acceptor structures and there is a sort of bi dipole moment you generate within the di uh, backbone so that's the current explanation or current understanding but this is a very challenging problem in the solar system let me little bit elaborate for one minute what you do is you shine the light you have a frankel exciton so the frankel exciton dissociation has been a very challenging in organic solar cells so if you have a high dielectric constant pi conjugated polymer you can screen out the coulombic potential that part i because of the time i could not really elaborate much upon it but that's a that's a sort of things we have been trying we are trying to develop those materials Thank you, Satish. There is one more question from Professor Amalan Pal. By fission, do you mean triplet, triplet annihilation? No, that's not. I mean, I do not mean that. I mean, fission is I have a singlet exciton and that dissociate into two triplet excitons. Again, Professor Pal, I'm very sorry because 17 minutes are very, very challenging actually to, uh, you know, to, you know, I could have explained a little bit more in detail. My apologies for that. But you know, sort of, I have, my, how, I hope I have not confused you. But singlet exciton can dissociate, you know, via TT pair to a true triplet excitons. I do not mean annihilation. Okay, I think uh, that brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank, please join me in thanking Professor Satish Patil Thank once you. again for a very Thank nice you. talk on this in, quite intricate class of materials. Thank of you. Great technological importance. Thank you, Satish. Thank you. Thank uh, you.